I'm back. And what I have done is actually, um, you hear tearing, that's the paper towel. This is the pressurized bottle I use for pre-treat. You've probably seen it in another video. But I rinsed the nozzle out so that it, um, it would actually have a, a cleaner hole on it. Um, because sometimes the pre-treat is kind of gummy. So it, it will actually create just a bit of a problem. I am going to heat press my shirt to start. Um, what I'm doing is getting ready to take the moisture off the shirt. Um, this is a Tool Text 202 that I'm doing this on. This is my first time using this for um, the purpose of DTG. I did do one for, um, I brought, bought it pre-bleached and I actually like the quality of it, but it was a different model. I'm knocking out the moisture to make it and flattening the fibers in the shirt because I did lint roll it earlier. So, here we go. I also am going to fold it here, get my center crease because when I line it up on the machine, to me, that makes it a whole lot easier on keeping my design center. But what I do is just go from the collar make sure my collars are even on both sides that's generally the center line on these shirts on all shirts it, it might not be on this one i'll find out later but i'm doing this design three inches down off the collar so i want my line to be kind of three inches down off the collar too This also gives me like a starting point with the pre tree. All right, so I'm gonna bring it over here. Um, and I did put down butcher paper because pre tree can kind of create a bit of an overspray. And since my design is actually going to be nine and a half by um i'm just showing you some methods uh too that i used kind of to map out where i'm going to pre-treat i usually um have a 11 by 17 paper well um craft paper cut but I know my nine, uh, for my design, my shirt is 14 and a half inches wide. So I need well, a little bit less, but yep, it's about 14 and a half inches wide measuring from there. But um, what I do is just kind of pretty cool trick. I have um, a pen. that I use. It is a water soluble marker. Well, water soluble pencil. Uh, let's see if I can get that to come up clear on the camera. There we go. Water soluble pencil. I bought it from uh, a fabric store. But this is a good way to center. And it's also a good way to make sure of my pre-treat line. And I know my design is going to be 11 and a half inches, roughly. A little bit. So, this is definitely where I want that pre-treat to hit in that area. 
So, let's grab the pre-treat. And I do use a board to kind of help with overspray. So that I can get it all up in everything. I sweep it and I came down just past that mark and I'm gonna come up a little bit further on that one but that's how I do it and I am going I, mean, I was trying to decide whether or not I'm gonna roll this one which this is my first time printing on it, so I don't think I am. Um, and the reason being I'm not is because I kind of want a good foundation for how it prints. So, move that out the way. And let's take this on over to the heat press. That's better because that light does kind of get blinding with the LED. But I'm gonna put this on up in here. I adjusted my pressure a little bit because when I was doing the free press, I noticed it was a little bit off. But I do use these. These are kind of thin. I'm going to hover it. Let me go ahead and do my hover. 30 seconds. seconds. I really should invest in the hover press, but I'm not going to. Not for the time being, because I really want to actually get a bigger press before I hover. Before I invest in the hover press. Plus, this has been working just fine. So, we're going to just let this press out 90 seconds on the cure for the, for the pre-treat. Um, and in that process, like I said, I've already sent the design to the printer. So, it's just waiting on the shirt to finish. Um, I normally have a cover on my heat press. But I've been noticing that's been trapping moisture um, for the bottom platen. I noticed the last shirt that I did, there was like an imprint not just from the pre-treat process. I end up having to wipe off the press from that and for um, the ink cure process. I seen the actual outline of what I did show up in moisture. So I figure it's kind of hindering the whole process. But we got about 25 more seconds to go on this. And I found it kind of cool learning that if the moisture is pulled out of the pre-treat the right way, that sheet that I use to cover it up, the um, untreated silicone sheet, it should dance up off the fabric without any effort. Like, literally pull itself up when I open the heat press. So, here we go. 
as you can see, it did do that. Just that. So, got this. And I am going to wipe this. Just because I'm a stickler for things. Alright, let's bring it around. Now we're going to go ahead and set it up to send the shirt on through. Uh, my platen is on the three. I'm going to pull this like two inches off the collar. It's my little Rubio. That's a cool trick too. You have a center line here and you have one there. There's actual arrows on the machine. But I'm gonna put this up there, move this down to the to the two inch mark, and then we are going to put our cover on. This is weird because I've never hardly seen wrinkles in my shirts. And I do see a lot of lint in this. Hopefully I'm not messing with the fibers too much. I'm going to send it through just to see if it... Um, if it beeps or anything, because I do see spots where the shirt is kind of sitting up high in my opinion. And if you want to see what it's doing on the screen, it's telling me to wait. Why is, I guess it's circulating or whatnot. And it should not be. And it did. So this is a part of getting it, getting that shirt in there flat enough. Like I said, I could see little bumps and ridges in there. And sometimes just doing something so simple as adjusting that will actually help. Because, <laughs> see, this time it didn't beep, and I didn't actually even take the shirt out. I just pulled the edges of the shirt. So, now, we're going to go ahead and send it on through. So, here's the print. I'd say it's doing pretty good on that white layer. Just watching it. Mm, I can see some dropouts though. And I know precisely how to use that at the top. Right. Well, everything is a test. Yeah, that white layer could have been quite a bit better. Which means it's probably going to turn out a bit like that first one I showed you all.
just like that. That's the end. Um, I do see a lot of imperfection in this. It turned out very similar to the gilding. So I know it's the pre-treat. Um, that's causing the most problem. And it's likely the pre-treat method. But this is going to likely flake. This is after the full cure, everything's on the ink, pre-treat everything. So, I am actually getting ready to do another print. Um, I'm going to test this one in DTF now, done on the F2100. Um, but yeah, this is pre-treat. Um, if I do this one again, I am going to roll it instead of relying on the heat press to give me a solid foundation thanks for joining in